Hey, okay, so I've done uh, several of these gas turbines here lately, and then a week ago I decided to take a break and uh, go back to a couple RDCs. So in that box right there is a brand new New Haven. It's uh, the new release with the uh, bright condition, just like this Rock it's, Island. Uh, new Haven, the same as I did this Rock Island a week ago. So this is the finished product, but I'm going to take you through the process I use because I've improved it over the years. And if you have these, uh, it's a little complicated, but it's not that big a deal. Then I'm going to go ahead and put it in forward and bring it around here. See if I can do it without messing it up a little bit. And turn on the headlights, which are 3 volt Minitronics Yellow Glow. And then F3 is what I use with the Digitrax decoder to turn on the marker lights. So we'll take a look at the back end real quick, I think. And you can see the red marker lights back there, they're green in the front, and we'll change directions. And there are those three millimeter, three volt yellow glows by Minitronics. So I'm going to turn the sound up. It has a, you can use F8. It doesn't turn it on and off, but it does change the sound level. So back and forward. Now when you hit speed step one, nothing happens. It should be moving forward because with the RDCs and step one, it stays basically at idle and starts moving. Then when you go to F2 or second step on the real thing, that's when the motor picks up speed and you can see it's pretty fast. So I don't know what I need to do to get in there and program that, but I need to change it somehow. I think you can see the people inside. And it's got LED lighting in there as well. Which I'll show you how I do that. I'll put it in reverse. Turn on the bell. There's speed step one. Again, it's not moving, and it should be. But I never have had one do that, and I've done probably a couple dozen of these. So there's speed step two, and as you can see, it's really pretty fast. It should be a lot slower. There's speed step one, it'll go back to idle. But it should be crawling. And stop. Back and forward. I think you can see, maybe you see the, the driver in there. There's one in each end. And I use, a, I, don't, I think you can see it, I use a piece of uh, wire, stainless steel, to simulate the chain on the end. I usually put in two, I only put in one on this one. Uh, they're kind of difficult to do, and kind of a pain, but I think on the uh, New Haven I'll probably put two of them in there. I've actually got some chains, but I have no idea where they're at after we moved. So. Uh, and I think on the actual models they use, it depends on the, on the builder, uh, on the, on the uh, railroad. Some of them use two, some of them use three. And some of them had those accordion types. So, kind of depends on who you are, I guess. So we're in forward, we'll bring it forward just one more time. Lights are on. That's it. Now I'll set up and we'll go ahead and start unboxing the uh, New Haven. I'll show you how easy it is to take it apart and then we'll start on the, I suppose, the improved process for uh, putting them together. Okay, so I've got this Proto 1000. Uh, I think you can see this. It's uh, RDC 2. New Haven, number 121, and it's a 920-35304. Uh, first time I've opened it up. 
I'm going to try and stay in the camera range. I kind of know where it is, but uh, sometimes it's kind of tough to do that. It comes with instructions, of course, and no trade parts breakdown. Uh, Walther's main line. Just four pages. RC1, 2, and 3. A lot of common parts. And then some frequency, how to take it apart, and conversion to DCC. And we'll look at that in just a minute. So put that aside. Uh, this has never been opened. So I get to do that. I just open one side typically. The locomotive is well protected. It's got this nice soft plastic to keep it from chafing. Be careful as you do this, kind of push it out gently and from one side, from the other side. And then you can put that aside. I'll organize that a little bit better. Some of the improvements they've done on these things are very nice. Again, this is a two. So you can see it really, it kind of gets into the motor box in here, unfortunately. And up here again, at this door you can either, but it's got enough seats in it. It's got nice, nice marking, very sharp paint job on it. Uh, it's got quite a bit of the underside, nothing like uh, it could have, but for the price, it's very well done. So the first thing I'll do is remove the coupler boxes. I put the parts in something like that. Take them both out. They can't be in there if you want to take it apart. Yeah, it's not done yet. Should be, it's clicking. Always has to be one, doesn't it? There it comes. Gotta have a little magnetism on your screwdrivers or you're going to spend half, half your life getting these things out of here. Now there's four screws, depending on what model it is. The one is different than the twos and the threes. But you get these four screws out. See that term mainframe was used a long time before they had computers. And some of these are just really, they love where they're at, I guess. Then to get the shell off, all you gotta do is lift the body out of it. It's just that easy. We're gonna set it aside for right now. We're gonna come back to it. So now you have the workings. Now this is DCC ready as you can see. And we're not going to, we're going to use the 8 point, the 8 pin. And we're going to remove this tape because we're going to take everything out of this basically and remove the DCC ready board. We're going to remove all these little rascals because I don't like them. Basically, this I'm at the back end of it, and every once in a while I get one of these that just really has become devoted to where it's at. Okay, I got some more screws that hold this board on. Keep in mind the machine screws go in the back, and I think on these they use machine screws in the front, which they didn't use on the release before. Let's take a look. Well, I think these are machine screws as well. Kind of ends the suspense of making sure you get the right screws on the right end. 
and they are they're the same as the back ones so and that releases the board now these lights are incandescent and typically they've really got those glued in so what I use is a little debonder and put it in here and just let it kind of soak for a little bit while I take some more things off because we're going to undo everything okay so in this case they have the gray on the right and the blue on the left Whatever, orange and gray, huh? And then these lights here, you have to kind of be careful where these come up because they've got this tape on here. And you don't want to pull these out from below. Okay. So that was off, and then... So the two lights are now released. And there they come. And then the pickups, right and left. Tweezers. Okay, so this end is free. Kind of. Okay, now I gotta get this piece of tape off. And again, get it out of the way. Now we'll take these pickup leads off. Messing around. This one goes over here. That one goes over there. Gotta keep them straight. The lights will come out. We're not going to use them because we're going to replace them with better system so now you got this and what you got on the bottom here is the a pin and you got a couple more tabs you're going to try and sand these down a little bit you're just going to kind of smooth these out flat because we're going to be putting a piece of adhesive with led lights on it for the interior lights okay now maybe we can get the lights out who knows They don't seem to want to go anywhere. They just don't. They kind of like where they're at, I guess. So I'm going to take, turn it off for a little bit. I'm going to take those out, and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so I got the lights out. What I use is like an emery board. This one's pretty fine. I like the little bit tougher ones. But I'm going to grind these wires down here until they're almost flush. What I watch for is the con... These, oh my gosh, I gotta think what they call them. Uh, conductors in here. I don't want to expose them. If, even if I expose them, it's not a big thing, but I want to make sure I don't cut them off. Short them out completely.
Okay, now I got those kind of where I want them. I can't take much off these because they're, they're my plugs. But I can flatten them down. Now it's kind of a mess. So what I got to do now is take my reel. And I know it takes nine lights. So it just goes from here three, six, nine. And it comes up to where you can cut them off right here. I think you can see the uh, from the center. Yeah. Show the scissors and cut right across that line right there. Drop it on the floor. Da -da -da. And knock the camera down, trying to pick it up probably. So when I first get it, it's it's been in that reel so long, it's kind of I want it to get back to being flat if I can. Or at least as flat as I can. This kind of releases it from its backing as well, which is never a problem. Okay, so I may not ever get it where I really want it, but at least it's not as preloaded in the other position as it was. But now, what you need is a rag or a tissue. And I'm going to use a tissue because my rag is so dirty now. It would kind of defeat its purpose. Take some isopropyl alcohol. No smoking while you're doing this, guys. It could lead to a KB syndrome, which is boom. So we don't want that. So now we're going to clean this off. So whatever was on it, don't worry about the. And I'm going to get my fingers on it just a little bit. But then I'm going to make sure I don't touch anymore because I don't care how clean you think you are. There's typically always oil in your fingers. Now, we know this is the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel off the backing most of the way and then we're going to try and keep this in the camera and then we're going to try and go straight up the middle as best we can right over when we get to the pins we're going to try and be a little bit fancy we're going to try and get as much of this on the as we can so I use my thumbnails and I kind of bend it down in and come on the other side and do the same thing before it starts adhering on this side and I kind of let this come down already which I didn't want it to do so now I've got it back and I do want it in the middle So, that's close enough. No more than I get paid to do this. Okay. So now we got the interior lights. And these little dots right here is where you solder. It's just a really tiny, teeny, tiny little solder spot. And being off center is not going to hurt. You think I try and do a better job, and I really was trying, but I didn't. Now, you're going to need a yellow wire and a blue wire. And the blue wire needs to be a little bit longer than the average. So, what I have is... I like these wires a lot. So, here's the yellow. And I need a blue not much of either one I've turned on my soldering iron just now so it may take a minute or two you can see this stuff is really trying to come up 
So you get to kind of come back and keep working it down until it decides it would like to stay there, and it will. And if it doesn't, just put some canopy glue on it in between. I'm sorry, I kept bringing that down there. I shouldn't do that. I hate it when people do that. I hate it when I do it. <clears throat> well, I end up editing half of this out probably by the time I get done because nothing just seems to want to just work. Okay, so blue. Blue, blue, my love is blue. The blue we're going to hook into the board itself. Actually into the blue lead coming off of the decoder. So it needs to be a little bit long. When it comes to this wire, it's not that expensive. It's expensive, but it's not that expensive. So just make sure you have enough. And then you need just a little bit of yellow because you're going to come out and hook up to the yellow lead coming off of the sound side of the Digitrax SD-H166 decoder, which has already been programmed for the RDCs, just like the one you heard on the Rock Island. And this one doesn't have to be very long at all. And you're going to put... Uh, You're going to install a 347 ohm resistor in it. Okay. And the blue. These uh, lights, by the way, are 12 volt. Nice flux tool, uh, toothpick. Flux it just a little bit. I really was late on getting this thing turned on, so I don't know if it's hot yet or not. We'll find out, I guess. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Get a little fresh solder on it. That's how you know if it's hot. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Now, I know that's not supposed to be necessary, but what I do is I just touch I'm not really flexing it, I'm just touching the ends of these things. So the blue goes on the right, that's the positive common. And steady fingers or not, it's kind of neat to use the tweezers. Need just a drop of solder on the tip. And we just touch this for a second. And I would like it to be a little bit better than that. Okay. Same thing with the yellow side. I could have probably put a little bit more solder in that first one. But you don't need much. I mean, you can probably see it. 
Okay, so now this is ready. Make sure they're secure. The last thing you want to do is have them pull off later. And they are. But you can see there's just a small amount of solder used to hold those on. And they're fine. Then what I do is I'll drill a hole. Uh, you really can't see, but right through here, right about there, is there's uh, nothing there. So it allows me to drill a hole for these wires to go through and go up through the top of this thing. I could just run them through the sides, but I really kind of don't like getting near this one. I'm going to have to solder it later, so I just kind of drill a hole. So I'm going to drill that hole and we'll come back. Okay, I move the hole down a little bit, but it doesn't matter where that hole goes as long as it's not getting into uh, trouble with anything. So then what I want to do is I'll put just a drop of canopy glue to kind of hold the wire in place and get a drop down there and that's enough plenty 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 that just protects that wire from getting chafed later and it also keeps it from trying to get back down where it's going to be seen later I use these little clothespins for everything they are the handiest things in the world I've got a whole bag full of them You'll find them, typically you can find them at your grocery store, around the laundry stuff, as if uh, anybody hangs their clothes up, and that must be just for hanging doll clothes. I have no idea. But I use them for everything. They're a good heat sink, too, when you're soldering. Hook them onto your resistors or diodes, protect the heat from going up into the diode of the resistor. So this is basically can just sit someplace now for a while. And that's what it's going to do. Now, the next thing... As you can see, I kind of use a little finger vise. To drill my hole. Put it away, put the drill away. These things are a must. I know it doesn't look like I'm organized, and I'm not, but I try to be. So now, I'm not going to use any more solder for a while, so I'll turn my solder iron back off. Close up the flux jar. And now what I'm going to do is find me some people to put inside the car. Because you got to have people. Now I usually use 1-100, uh, they work out pretty good, they're small, most of these guys in here are those, but they're not really to scale, but if you try and use the 87's, uh, 187 HO, they're so doggone big, you can't hardly get many of them in there, here's a bag of those fatsos. Now one of the problems with these guys, to be quite honest, is these seats are so small, uh, they're not even, I don't even think they're like 1 100, I think they're smaller than that. So I end up having to cut legs off these rascals. So anyway, I'm going to dump a few of these over here to the side. I don't think you'll be able to see them. Oh, maybe so. Clear a little path right here. And then just find some of these folks. But unfortunately for them, as I install them, i got to cut their legs off. A morbid thing. But it's the only way they can get in there to sit down. So what I'm going to do is, you don't want to fill it up. But you got to remember, these things were used back in the 40s and 50s. So, I'll put just a drop of canopy glue where I want them. If I want two people, you see they're not in every seat, so you can kind of miss a seat or two. These back here, you want to make sure you put one in because 
they kind of hide the wires back there. Okay. That ought to probably do it for now. So I have just a little bit left here. So let's put two people in this one. Maybe a man and his secretary coming back from. Well, no, never mind. So we can put this old girl right back here. And again, toothpicks. They work so well. So well. Here's an old man with his cane, but he's a sitter. So obviously he doesn't like to give up his cane, which is fine. Like I say, he's a sitter. So he can sit right there. There you go, sir. You look comfy. Try and find color because the windows are, well, some of these are tinted. This one's they're not. But on some they are. And again, it doesn't matter where you put them, just yeah, breathe and find a place for them. That's not probably very good. So now those are set. They take about 24 hours. That's probably enough. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen passengers. Uh, it carries a whole lot more than that, but times are tough. I guess I could put some. Buddy over across from her. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's enough. Then we let that sit. Now, the thing about these is when you go to put this on, it goes like this. And the decoder is going to be up here. So to get from here to there, it takes a little bit longer lead. So what I do is, when I get one of these type of plugs that I've cut off from something else, I take and solder one of these leads on, then I, I double check all of this, make sure there's no shorts between them after I do them. So it allows me to install this type of lead. And they go just like so. These are fun, aren't they? They always seem to want to start crooked or something. Okay, so it's plugged in. So now, if the board is good, and I say that because some of these have been bad, and if this one's bad, I do have a spare. So I will use it. But I've got to strip the blue wire in here to attach this blue wire to it. And I will also attach another one to work the lights for the classification. And the next thing I get to do is I've got these lights out of here. So what I'm going to use, I've got so many different lights. Okay, so these are the Miniatronics Yellow Glows. They're 3 millimeter and they're 3 volt. So let me get a couple of these out. And I'll do this a little bit of the trimming, then I'll show you kind of how I hook them up. And in with these basically come the 347 and these aren't. Neither one of them, but I got a bunch of them, so I'll find them in a second. Just get rid of those for now. So I need two of these lights. There we go. And I don't care about these resistors. Really, I don't. And of course, this guy decides he's just going to get hooked up and be a pain. So, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now I've got 
one of the lights down here, the one that's going to go in the front, because they're both going to be done differently. So I flux the wires and and the bulb leads. Then I use this tweezers, not just to hold the thing, but also it works as a heat sink. Obviously, don't have enough solder on it, so put a little more solder on it, and that's it. Okay, so now I've got the heat shrink already on. It's long enough to cover everything. That solder joint there is a little bit too big, seems like it doesn't want to. There it goes. Then I'm going to go ahead and find some more heat shrink, and I'll show you how I put a cover on this to make the light go exactly where I want and no further. Okay, so now once I get this shrink on and get it attached where it's going to basically hold, then I take this shrink and I cut off just a small piece that you can see, like right here. Cut it at a little bit of an angle so the bulb's in there, and then this is going to go right in here. And this is kind of fun sometimes because these things really like to not go down and lay flat because they're just a little bit bigger, so it's kind of a challenge. And it's not worth spending a lot of video time on. Just be careful you don't damage the bulb while you're doing this. And try and keep it. And then once I get that down in there where I like it where it's at, and I'm still fighting it, uh, once again, use the canopy glue. That's it. Now what I'll do is grease some canopy glue down on that and let that set. And I've got my front light installed for now. Seems like an overkill, but it's worth it because that's where you want it to be. So I'll take a break and I'll come back with the next phase of this thing in just a momento. Okay, so now it's time for the rear light. So I'm going to cut off a little piece of shrink to go over the light. But first, we're going to cut off a little bit of red and black shrink. If I can find it through the red. I put it where I couldn't forget where it was and then forgot. Okay, so what we want is a piece long enough to almost go to the end. Almost, but not quite. So I'll show you what I mean here. So the black goes on the long one, the red goes on the short one, and it leaves us just a little bit off the end. I need a little bit more than that, so I'll cut just a little bit more off each of them. Not much. I want the ends to be exposed. 
and the red is going to go that way and the black is going to go the opposite direction and there's no soldering so the only thing that holds them in place is this piece of end shrink and this is where I get to kind of burn my fingers a little bit so clean off the soldering iron and just touch there some nails don't burn okay and then I can turn it just maybe a little bit left maybe and maybe not I guess not and then we're going to go around this part as well and that's what it looks like okay then these should stay where they are so they come out of this end like so but they gotta be pinched together up there and they don't like they're pinched Pinch as close in as you can. Okay. Then they go in here. And they're just as much fun as the ones on the other end. They just don't like to do this. And then you bring them around. like so and bend them still videoing? yes I am I got an 8 year old and a 10 year old that show interest every once in a while I show, in, I show interest in your work every, every single time I come over here I know you do, I appreciate that, that's pretty cool it's because it's really interesting it is, yeah Hello. Hey, 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 hey. Watch out. I'm going to put some acid on your nose. Oh, no. Can you wash it off? Yeah, you'd want to rinse it off pretty quick. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Then you take the needle nose. Have you ever got the acid on you before? Oh, yeah. That's why I only got ten fingers now. What? <laughs> You've had more than ten fingers? No, I only had ten fingers. You're so easy sometimes, you know what? Mm-hmm. Okay, once you get the wire down in there. Hey, put a little solder on it. Forget about my Pokemon cards. Wow. Wow. What are you in the video? And that one's in. What do you call your subscribers? Subscribers. I call them foxes. 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 It's awesome to came up with them. Surely you guys got something else you can do, right? I like watching you. <laughs> oh. I am flattered. It's entertaining. Hmm? It's entertaining. <laughs> this guy just don't want to stay down. But he's going to have to. So he's in the hole. Who's he? Is there someone out there here? Yeah, uh, this piece of wire. <laughs> a piece of wire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A piece of wire isn't alive. Not anymore. A piece of wire never been alive. Never been alive? Ow, 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 ow. Did you hurt yourself? I burnt myself. Come okay. I mean, Come on. That's what I gotta do for the back end. I got that. 
Now it's just a matter of letting stuff cure. Okay, come on. No. Come on. 